What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for December 11th, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of the podcast. Happy Hump Day to everyone out there. Before we get started, let's do a little housekeeping. Be sure to follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont on Twitter and TikTok. At Philly Jimbo on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's at Jimbo underscore Mont. Continue to spread the word. Big things happening. Got some things lined up. Been working, uh, trying to work out some details for kind of expanding the, the presentation, especially on video. So continue. Your support matters. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll be, <clears throat> we've been featured in the On Patterson newsletter. We will be at some point this week. I don't know if it'll be today or later in the week, but give them a shout as well. Winding down our gift and food drive. And I, to say I'm overwhelmed by all of the, uh, the donations and generosity is an understatement. It's, it's been incredible. There is still time. The information is in the description if you want to make a monetary donation. If you're participating in the reverse advent calendar, be sure to, <clears throat> if you're going to donate directly to them, be sure to let them know it's for our food drive. Uh, if you want, you can always Amazon stuff to my house uh, or just make the monetary donation. If you are participating in the reverse advent calendar, though, the item of the day is chunky or progresso soups. So those soups that eat like a meal. We know the chunky soups are a very big part of Philadelphia history, going back to good old Donovan. I know the Kelseys were involved in it. So if that is if you're participating in the reverse advent calendar, that is the item of the day. 25 days of kindness. This is coming at a perfect time. We did this about a week or so ago. But as you're getting ready for the holidays and all the new gifts, and especially if you have kids, take some of those old clothes, some of those old toys, donate them to charity. Uh, as, as long as they're in good condition, give them to Goodwill, the Salvation Army, whatever you have to do, uh, and help make some holiday magic happen in that way. Plus, it helps clean out your basement, your garage, your attic. Uh, the kids' rooms, whatever it could be, uh, and it helps out those who need it the most. Uh, and if you're anything like me, uh, I get a lot of joy out of, obviously I get a lot of joy out of donating to the people that need it, but there's something very cathartic about just taking a bunch of stuff from your house and getting rid of it and getting it out. Um, and it, also, if you're anything like me, you know it's a temporary fix until the new batch of stuff comes in. But 25 Days of Kindness, go donate some old clothes, some old toys, whatever you can. Even if it's, uh, we have like a chain of people that we donate clothes to and from. Uh, friends, family members, uh, everybody. We know where we get a bunch of, it, it, now that the kids are getting older, it's a little bit different, but... Like we had our winter clothes people, we had our summer clothes people. Um, so don't hesitate to get rid of your your old stuff as long as it's in good condition and donate it to somebody who can use it. All right, let's get into this. Uh, let's start with the recap of yesterday's question of the day. I asked you, based on everything that is happening, are the Eagles in trouble? I'm a little surprised by the results of this. It's a 50-50 split. Uh, yes and no. And I'm not really sure which way I, I, I want to go with this because they could be. This could be nothing. And thank you, as always, for participating in the question today. We will have another one later in the show. But this is a crucial week for this team. And I, I think um, – I'll start off by saying I, I feel as though if we didn't aren't, weren't still suffering from the PTSD of last season, maybe we're looking at this different. But I think in the back of everyone's mind, here we go. This is where this downward spiral starts. And it's not necessarily coming a, a good week. Pittsburgh's going to be a tough game. Uh, and if they happen to lose this week, it's just going to amplify even more. Uh but I do feel this is a crucial week. Today is a crucial day. Uh, Sirianni was on 
the radio and was interviewed yesterday and uh, made it perfectly clear. And part of it you could tell was the PR machine from the Eagles. Part of it I, I think he really meant was that he sees them praying together, eating lunch together, interacting at practice. And we only get to see the, the snips during the game uh, and the post-game conferences. Doesn't necessarily think it's going to be a huge problem, uh, but there's obviously something there. Uh, I don't necessarily think we're overreacting to this. Um, and, and I will say this is this is two days in a row now. Uh, usually I stick up for Philly fans and kind of said, no, we were wrong during the Bounty Bowl. Usually I'm tough on the media. And I see a lot of people blaming the media for this. And this is not the media's fault. I, I, I'd be willing to bet most people in the media would rather be talking about getting ready for the Steelers than this drama. And it's not like they are speculating or anything. Brandon Graham, flat out, he said what he said. So, yes, it is a story. I think uh, one thing, I, there's issues with the passing game. And, and I think that is obvious. And it's something I've talked about on here before. And it, it, I mentioned the pendulum swing. And it, somehow we need to get somewhat more of a happy medium. I'm not saying Jalen needs to throw the ball 30 times a game. It's just you can. I think they can win. And they, and they were doing it a lot during the middle of that streak. Where if he is throwing 20, 22, 23 times a game... Where are those 23 passes going? And missing open receivers that could be long touchdowns, that, that's a part of it. And he's just holding the ball too long. So I, I think had Brandon Graham not said what he said, th- we would still be talking about it because A.J. Brown's comments, nobody would have pointed it back to Jalen specifically. Uh, 100%, I would say, if Brandon Graham didn't say what he said. He was asked what needs to improve, the passing, and it does. I mean, I don't think he said anything wrong. He's not saying anything we didn't say. Now, Brandon Graham made his comment, so uh, maybe there's more to that. And I don't necessarily think that... I'm not saying the Eagles put uh, Brandon up to this per se, but Brandon's not a dumb guy. Brandon knows how the media works. Brandon knows this city better than most people do in players in this town. This was a calculated move by Brandon. Nobody's going to tell me any different. Of course, he walked it back and said, I should have done this, that, or the other. But this was very calculated by him. And one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to bring the team together and they're going to squash it or we're going to see a repeat of last year. And that's why I'm like, I I, I don't know. I think big picture, I don't necessarily think it's a huge deal. Uh, I've talked a lot. uh, I've worked with people that I I wouldn't necessarily hang out with. The, The added little piece to this, though, is that they were best friends or are. I don't know. And that's where... Uh, I think they spoke out of term, but they are both, uh, I think, available to the media today. So we should see some direction of which way this is going to go. I uh, would not be the least bit surprised to see AJ have like eight catches for 150 yards on Sunday either. Uh, but like I said, this is either going to bring them together or we're going down the same path as we were before. Um, But I don't think this is an overreaction. I don't think this is a media-driven story. I think a lot of the things last year were purely speculation, driven by the media, obviously. But this one, I don't think uh, you can put it on the media because Brandon said what he said. And I'm not saying the Eagles put him up to this, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, their PR has been on point this year. Look at what how they reined in Sirianni and all of those things. So I don't know. There's a lot of moving parts to this. And you would think the way that people are reacting, we're like a 2-11 team instead of an 11-2 team. But I, I'm anxious to see what Jalen and AJ have to say today when they're available to the media. 
but it's we'll see what happens. I mean, it's Pittsburgh is not the team you want, and I mean, I, only because you're coming, you're, you're, you've won nine in a row. They got a good defense, and if this game doesn't go well, the it's gonna get it, it might be an ugly week in Philly. Uh, I'm. I heard on the radio this morning too, and it was an interesting take. What happens if they beat the Steelers the same way they beat the Ravens and the same way they have been where Saquon goes off, Jalen only throws for 115 yards or whatever it is, and AJ has three catches? Like, you're still winning. So it's a very delicate balance, and I'm anxious to see how it plays out. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention uh, our old pals Donovan and T.O. still beefing after all of these years. Um, T.O. not able. I guess Donovan was on WIP the other day and said, you got to be a man and just kind of handle this in-house. T.O. not missing an opportunity to throw some shade at Donovan said, well, that's very rich coming from you. Um, Something about the suit. We could have had a couple Super Bowls or something, but that's another story for another time. And then Freddie Mitchell got into the mix. I uh, had T.O. on his Instagram live. Freddie Mitchell was at our tailgate randomly the other day, uh, which was kind of funny. But uh had T.O. on his Instagram live and was uh, basically, he was like, I didn't even like Donovan, but I still went out there and bought out. Like, still beefing after all of these years. You got to love T.O. Uh, and no, I am not putting A.J. Brown in T.O.'s category. Not saying that at all, but should be an interesting day and a fun show tomorrow. All right, Flyers, 5-3 to three win over the Columbus Blue Jackets yesterday down in Columbus. Dominating fashion, they had a 5-1 to one lead. Travis Konecti had two goals. Matt Vey Mishkoff had two assists. This dude is just an absolute stud. Like, most exciting rookie right now in Philly, and I, I, I will say that. Uh, this game was a fun game to watch. Uh, this Flyers team, I'm telling you, if you haven't jumped on board and watched some hockey yet, this is a fun team to to watch. And uh, we might be in for a lot of fun here with Flyers hockey. They take on the Red Wings tomorrow night at the Wells Fargo Center. But good to see them snap that three-game losing streak, play with some energy and some effort and things like that. Uh, looking forward to it. Like I said, now is the time. I've been telling you for about a year and a half now, but now is the time to jump on the Flyers bandwagon before it's too late. Uh, Phillies news. Jordan Romano, uh, the guy they just signed in free agency, said he wanted to sign with the Phillies due to the atmosphere at Citizens Bank. He likes the expectations that the fans have on their team and their players. He says he has the same expectations for himself. Uh Rob Thompson at the owners meeting, who's on one of the MLB network shows, essentially said he's already talked to Alec Boehm. They're not looking to trade him. Um, So it certainly does seem that this team is going to come back, uh, basically run it back, which it's not a bad team to run back. Yes, they're a year older, but it's it's all about the plate uh, approach. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. Maybe their goal in this offseason is just to have so much good pitching that it doesn't matter what the offense does. Although we saw how that worked out against the Mets with Zach Wheeler. Uh, And I thought this was pretty cool. Cole Hamels is going to be one of the part-time broadcasters for uh, NBC Philly. And I'm anxious to see. I I think Cole has some good insights. Uh, His voice does annoy me somewhat. Uh, Maybe not as much as Kevin Stocker's. Uh, but I, I think Kevin Stocker's on the radio anyway. So Cole Hamels will be a part-time person on the broadcast team. I like that. Get, get some insights from him. I've always liked Cole Hamels, so uh, looking forward to that as well. All right. It's that time, and didn't think it was going to happen this soon. However, you all knew this was going to happen at some point, Um based on my relationship with the Sixers. And before you say, here we go again, hear me out on this. And I know I'm sounding like the guy that's going back to the crazy ex and saying, no, 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 no. This time is going to be different. Hear me out. But 
This time might be different. Hear me out. Um, they've quietly started to play better. And they've cleaned up some of the things defensively. Uh, they, with, Depending on the lineup, there's still some issues sometimes with the rebounding. Uh, lots of different guys are getting involved in the offense. It fe- seems like they're starting to gel somewhat and play together. The other night, like I watched more highlights of that game. They pl- they looked like a great team. Yes, it was Chicago, but that's the Sixers team that we kind of expected. Joe played 30 minutes, scored 30 points, 31 or whatever it was. Paul George scoring was down, but he he's like that key piece that fits into the offense. Tyrese had a triple double, so he, like I said, I, I'm not ready to go kick the football yet, but. I'm thinking about it. Maybe this time is going to be different because uh, obviously a lot is going to happen and and come down to the health of Joe, Paul George. But if they can somehow get Joe in somewhat of a consistent sort of rotation and not play a game or two and then miss two weeks, it might – they could make some noise. Um, And the way the NBA Cup sort of played out, they have like a mini sort of buy week or 10 days, whatever you want to call it, um, where they they get a lot of time off. Uh, Nick's, or, yeah, Nick Nurse has called it like a mini training camp. So maybe, just maybe, they could do something. And I mean, the next six games, they're 7-15 and 15 right now. They could roll off some, some games here. The, the Pacers at home. Then they have a home and home with the, the Hornets. The Cavs next Saturday, which should be a good game, home against the Spurs, and then the Celtics on Christmas Day. So if they could win maybe three, four of those games, we might be slowly climbing up because they're only, I think, four games out, four and a half games out, something like that of the sixth seed in the playoffs. Uh, They're closer to the fifth seed than they are the lottery pick right now. So maybe things are starting to turn in Sixersville. And I know. I, I know exactly what I sound like. I get it. But you never know. Maybe I might take one last last shot at kicking that football. But that does lead to today's question of the day. Now, think about this logically. We, we talk on this podcast a lot. A logic versus emotion. Don't think about this emotionally. Think about it logically. Can the Sixers make a run at the sixth seed or higher? I think they can, and I think if you get the sixth seed and don't have to play in the play-in, this is not a team I don't think that anybody would want to play. So let me know your thoughts on that. Am I just going back to the crazy X, knowing how this is going to end, or is this time truly different? Can the Sixers make a run at the sixth seed? 267-495-8531. That's the Back to the Future voice and text line. Get that. Anything else Philly sports related off your chest. Let me know your thoughts on the AJ Jalen saga. Tell me how crazy I am for going back to the crazy X, but I really think they can make a run. Obviously, a lot of things have to sort of be consistent, most notably Joe's health. But, hey, man, why not? Maybe it's just all the drama from the Phillies but or the Sixers, but let me know your thoughts on that. Can they legitimately make a run at a, 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 the sixth seed or even higher in the East, which the East is not that good, so... Let me know your thoughts, 267-495-8531. All right, we're going to stick with the Sixers today. And we all know that Moses Malone was the piece that put the or the Sixers over the top to win that championship in 1983. But on this day in 1982, the guy that got them right to the tippy top and couldn't get them over had a game and reminded everyone just who he was and that he was the one that got the Sixers right on the brink and then Moses is the one that took them to the promised land. But on this day, back in 1982, the Sixers beat the Pistons 128-111 to down at the Spectrum. And this was a Dr. J night. Reminded everybody who he was and said, hey, don't forget about me. I'm a pretty good basketball player as well. Pistons just could not stop Dr. J that night. He shot 20 for 29, had 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 44 points, also had a career-high 8 blocks. Uh, He just was a one-man wrecking show. 
as the Sixers beat the Pistons to improve to 18 and four. Uh, obviously, we know Moses was the reason they went over the cha- over the hump for the championship. The faux faux faux. They ended up going faux five faux. And I, I talked about this before. Check out Systems of a Dream. Uh, good uh, song uh, for the the Sixers in honor of the Moses' faux five faux. Uh, but to his credit, that night Moses did have himself a pretty good game too. Have, he had 17 points, 13 rebounds. But it was all about Dr. J. Dr. J had 44 points, 8 blocks, uh, 11 rebounds, uh, 7 assists. Just could not be stopped that night. And I think what a lot of people don't realize about Dr. J, and this is going to be a little, this is one of my favorite things about this podcast. So this is going to be a little history lesson for some of you young people. Pieces of a dream, by the way, not systems of a dream. Pieces of a dream, sings the song Fo Five Fo. But this is a little history lesson. Do yourself a favor. Go back and look at Dr. J highlights because everybody, a lot of times, we talk about, oh, you can't compare the errors. It's tough to compare the errors. Guys, back then, the game was different. Dr. J could come into the league now in his prime and still be a Hall of Famer. He he was ahead of his time. He was an innovator could play defense, could shoot. Uh, He might have to work on his three-point shooting somewhat, but he came up in a time when the three-point shot wasn't as big as what it is now. Uh, But just change the way the game was played. So do yourself a favor and check that out. Um, But you'll see, Dr. J is one of the greatest and probably one, I, I think, as time goes by, probably one of the more underrated players in Philly sports history. Uh, because he couldn't win the title, he needed Moses' help. But on this day in 1982, Dr. J reminded everybody just how good he was, dominating the Pistons, 44 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, a career-high 8 blocks, as the Sixers improved to 18-4. and four. And this was a start of a run for the Sixers where everybody knew, all right, this is the year we're winning the championship. They were starting with this game. They won 33 of their next 36 games en route to that championship. So on this day, Sixers beat the Pistons. Dr. J with 44 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 8 blocks, and just showed everybody just how good he was. But do yourselves a favor, kids. Go check out some Dr. J highlights and see what all the hype is about. He could totally just come right in now and and play in the NBA at a very, very high level. So if you want to give your thoughts on that on the Back to the Future voice and text line, feel free to do that. And then finally today, forgotten teams in Philly sports history, teams that you either forgot existed or did not know played in Philly. Today, the Philadelphia Freedoms. They are from the World Team Tennis League. Uh, They had one year in 1974 uh, where they – played they were the best most dominant team in the world team tennis league and then lost and got upset in the championship billy jean king was on that team and did inspire the song philadelphia freedom by elton john you're welcome for the lots of music faux five faux by pieces of a dream uh, Philadelphia Freedom by Elton John, but you're welcome for that earworm today. As I was taking my notes and, and planning out the podcast for yesterday, could not stop singing Philadelphia Freedom. Um, so there you go. And, and you're going to see my face and hear my voice as it's in your head today. Uh, but that was inspired. And then after that season, they merged with the Boston and Lobsters the next season. They did come back in 2001. Billie Jean King owns the t- owned the team. Uh, they started back and they played up until 2021 when they suspended operations due to COVID and they just haven't bounced back yet. Uh, but Billie Jean King is still involved with uh, the Philadelphia Freedoms and the tennis in the area. Uh, the King or the Kings, the Freedoms played at Hagen's Arena in St. Joe's. They played at Cabrini. They even played matches at King of Prussia Mall. They played at Villanova at Finner and Pavilion. But the Philadelphia Freedoms are today's forgotten Philly team. They played in 1974. 
Came back in 2001, played through the 2021 season. No word yet on whether the league is going to come back or not. I have a feeling at some point, 20, 25 years from now, we might be talking about COVID the same way we did with the depression on how it just sort of decimated some of these lesser leagues and lesser teams. But the Philadelphia Freedoms are today's forgotten team, and you're welcome for the earworm. On this day in 1982, Sixers beat the Pistons 128 to 111 down at the Spectrum. Dr. J had himself a day scoring 44 points and reminding everybody that, hey, Moses might be the guy that's getting us over the hump, but I got us to the top of the hump. We'll have more on the Sixers, Flyers, Phillies, as well as this situation. I'm very excited to see what AJ and Jalen have to say to the media today. I think if they don't talk about it, it's only going to fuel the speculation. So we'll see what happens with that. Be sure to donate to our gift and food drive. Get in touch with me. Text me. Leave a voicemail. Tell me how crazy I am for, for going back to the Sixers. But let me know. Can they make a run at the sixth seed or higher? I can't see why not. The East is not that good. I don't know. I can see Charlie Brown, me being Charlie Brown, kind of backing up, saying this time's going to be different. Maybe this time I'll kick that ball. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for December 11th, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Wednesday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.